Hi everyone. So, uh, another skills video. C1 quadratic inequalities this time. Um, you've probably done quite a lot of uh, inequalities at school, and you know it probably would have covered some in class by now and on the assignments by now. And what does inequalities mean, and where are they kind of relevant? Well, they're going to seem kind of just like an algebraic exercise at the moment, but if you're doing something like decision maths, D1, um, inequalities can actually correspond to very reasonable things like to do with businesses. So if you're kind of a, a chocolate producer, let's say you're, you manufacture chocolates, right? Uh, let's say you've got a gold box and a silver box of chocolates. I don't know, let's go gold, then there's a silver box of chocolates. Okay. Uh, and let's say um, it costs, so its cost in like pence, let's say its cost was uh, 80p to produce for a gold box and it was 50p to produce for a silver box. Let's say to wrap the thing um, takes 30 uh, man hours for gold, but it takes 35 man hours for silver. Um, <coughs> Let's say something like that, okay? So an inequality that could be produced, if we called gold X and silver Y, right? Let's say um, the amount of man hours you had for wrapping, the maximum that you have is say 300, 300 hours, right? Or 300 hours worth of minutes. So. At the moment, this wrapping time, this is in minutes, okay? If we wanted to build uh, a way, a constraint of describing that, that's where we would use inequalities. So, 30x plus 35y, so this is the amount of time per every unit of x is 30 minutes, so 30 minutes times that plus 35 minutes to make the silver, times y has got to be less than or equal to our 300 hours times by the 60 minutes, right? So, so that's going to be 18,000 minutes, right? And this explains, well, this is a very reasonable inequality to write. This is a, here's, this is a realistic situation that would require inequalities because you only have maximum 18,000 minutes available and this <coughs> your constraints are 30 minutes for every X produced and 35 minutes for every Y produced and there you go you've built a realistic reason to use inequalities which you could solve later this is all just why you might want to use inequalities and therefore even though we're only dealing with algebra in these problems normally uh, you can see that in the real life context they do have a place now, you're used to say something like, I don't know, uh, 5x plus 4 is greater than 1. Uh, find the values of x that satisfy this. So, of course, we would move all your constants over. That's minus 3. We would divide by 5. So, for this to be the case, that 5 lots of something plus 4 is greater than 1, well, that would be only true if x is greater than minus 3 over 5. Okay? But now, we have a slight step up because we've got this quadratic <coughs> here. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the value of x that this occurs at, so what's called the critical values, and then we can draw a quick graph to see uh, whether our statements are true or not. Okay. So at the moment, I'm going to just say, okay, x squared minus 4x take 5 equals 0, and I'm going to solve it. So if we solve it, we could factorize that. So we got x minus 5 and x plus 1. So that means our critical values are x equals 5 and x equals minus 1, right? The thing is, though, these are equal signs and therefore only correspond to one value, but we want a set of values. And to kind of illustrate how we can work that out is through a quick graph, right? So if x is minus 1, that's there. x is 5, that's there. We know it's a positive quadratic, so here's a 
positive quadratic. We know it crosses at minus 5, right? So the critical values are x equals 5, x equals minus 1. We're trying to find the point where this graph is less than 0. Well, you can see that everything in between here is when the y value is 0. And remember, it says it's less than, so it's not inclusive. So we're saying that x must be everything to the left of 5 and everything to the right of minus 1. Now let's see if we can put that together. Can I put that together? So all I do is I'll write the minus 1, 5. You see that x, the number x, is sandwiched between these two values. If I read this out loud, does this make sense? Minus 1 is less than 5. Yes, it is. Therefore, it makes sense. Always good to read these numbers out in your head to see if it makes sense. You cannot leave it in this way. Um, that wouldn't give you your final mark. You must put them together if it's applicable. Let's try the second one then. So 12 plus 4x is greater than or equal to x squared. Again, this is not uh, in the right form yet. We need to move everything over to that left-hand side, then we can compare it to 0 and solve it as normal. So, oh, I can move everything over to the right. I'm going to move everything over to the right. So I've got x squared, take 4x, take 12, 0. And just because I don't like it, this side, uh, it just doesn't look very nice to me. I'm just going to turn it all around so I can see it properly. Okay? So I've moved everything over to the left. And now we've got this inequality. So we're back to pretending it equals 0. Best way. Let's see if we can factorize this. I think it's 6 and 2. So minus 6x plus 2. Critical values then. So I must write my critical values. x equals 6, x equals minus 2. Quick graph. Again, I've got minus 2, I've got 6 positive quadratic, crosses at minus 12, bang. See how quick that is? And we're looking for it less than or equal to 0. So again, when is y less than or equal to 0? Well, it's here, and it includes 6 and minus 2. So therefore, x is greater than, sorry, greater than or equal to minus 2, or x is less than or equal to 6. But again, can I put them together? Minus 2 x is sandwiched between minus 2 and 6. Minus 2 is less than or equal to less than or equal to 6. Yes, it is. So we're happy. Let's try this next set then. So here we've got the find the set of values of x satisfying this and this. Whoa. So we've got two lines here. And where do they intersect? And where uh, where are these statements true? So, let's do what we did last time. Let's take this one first. Again, let's assume it equals 3 at the moment. We'll bring that 7 over to the right-hand side. Well, actually, you don't have to make it equal 3 because it's not, not as hard. We can just go straight for it. So, 4x is greater than minus 4. So, divide everything by 4. x is greater than minus 1. Remember, if dividing by minus 1, then the inequalities switch directions, okay? You should know that from GCSE. Here, again, I don't like my x's on the right-hand side, just visually, I don't know, just, it annoys me. So now we can move all our numbers over and divide by 2, and there we go. We've got two inequalities and, it's, and they both need to fit. So at the moment, this x is greater than minus 1. Think about this. Again, it's on a graph, isn't it? Here's minus 1, and x is greater than minus 1. Doesn't include it, so circle around it. Everything beyond minus 1 is OK. Whereas this one, x is less than, again, doesn't include 3. So if I... That includes all of these numbers, doesn't it? Between 3 and minus infinity. The only place where they coincide 
is between the two of them. So where this is true and this is true has to be between minus 1 and 3. So x is sandwiched between minus 1 and 3. Inequality signs are the same. And there we go. Next one then, we've got a quadratic this time and a regular. So I don't like my x squared on the right, so I'm just going to switch it all around. So x squared is less than 12 minus 4x. I'll pretend it is equal for now, so then I can start solving this thing. So x squared, if I move it all, actually let's go here first. Let's go here first. So x squared, move it all over to the right. 4x minus 12 is less than 0. Let's pretend it equals 0. And now we can solve. So I reckon this is going to be um, x plus 6 and x minus 2. So our critical values, remember, c dot v is x equals minus 6 and x equals 2. So if I was to draw the graph at the moment, I've got minus 6 and I've got 2. It's a positive quadratic and it hits at minus 12. So that's like that. Okay. And we're looking for when it's less than 0. So less than 0 is all this section, isn't it? But I've also got to consider this bit on the right-hand side, this and. So 5x is greater than, move that minus 3 over 5. So x is greater than 1. So I need them to satisfy both sets of simultaneous equations. So here's 1, not inclusive. So everything between 1 and 2 is satisfied, isn't it? Okay, so x must lie between 1 and 2 in order for this to work. Because your quadratic is between 2 and minus 6. Let's keep going. And we're going to move to discriminant problems where you can use inequalities for that as well. So I've got a circle C has center A21 and passes through the point B107. Prove that the line x plus 1 equals y will intersect the circle twice. So first, you need to know the equation of that circle. Now because the circle has center C, it's a bit much harder this time, we know that the formula for a circle, the equation is this, isn't it? So if the center C is at A21, I know that we've got x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals, and now I need to find the radius. Quick picture, A is our center, 2, 1. B lies on the circle, 10, 7. So the radius has to be the distance between A, B. Now we know the distance A, B is our x2 take away x1 squared plus our y2 take away. So it's Pythagoras, isn't it? So that's 8 squared plus 6 squared. So that's uh, 64 plus 36 square root. That's 10. So our radius is 10. And therefore, our um, r squared is 100. So I could just put 100 in there. All right. So there's the circle equation. Fantastic. Prove that the line y equals x plus 1 will intersect twice. So, hmm, how do I do that? Because, you know, if I was to sketch this on a graph, if that's 2 and that's 1, you know, I could put a set of axes on there. Uh, you know, pictorially, you might be able to see where x plus 1 is, but why don't we just use our simultaneous equation knowledge? If we know that y equals x plus 1 first, let's see where they intersect and prove that they intersect twice. Okay. So if I sub y into there, I get x minus 2 squared plus y, which is x plus 1, minus the 1, all squared equals 100. So that's x minus 2 squared plus, and now x plus 1 minus 1, that's just x all squared equals 100. Multiply the bracket, x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus x squared equals 100. Put it all together, x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. 
minus 4x minus 96 equals 0. And now I can use my discriminant, can't I? Because I know the discriminant b squared minus 4ac, I know that needs to be greater than 0 if the line intersects twice, because that tells me I have two roots, two real roots. Right? Two real roots means that the graph will cross twice in two distinct places. So b is minus 4. So this is minus 4 squared, minus 4 lots of a, 2 times minus 96 equals, so 16 minus 4, 2, minus 96, 784, 784, which is greater than 0, therefore two real roots, two real distinct roots. You see how we've just used inequalities there? In order to solve a problem, fantastic. Um, is there another example? Yes. Okay, let's try another one. A bit more algebraic this time. Find the range of values of k such that this has real roots. That's interesting as well. Let's just think about our description. So whenever I'm saying, oh, has something got real roots or has it got... Uh, no roots and stuff, you should be thinking discriminant, discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. So if we have b squared minus 4ac equals 0, what does it mean? Greater than 0, what does it mean? Uh, great, less than 0, what does it mean? Well, equals 0 means has uh, equal real roots, doesn't it? Equal real roots. Greater than 0 means has two distinct real root, root, ugh distinct real roots and less than zero means no real roots i.e. the numbers are imaginary because you can't square root a, a negative number right so remember that goes into your quadratic b squared minus 4ac your quadratic formula doesn't it so if that is negative you'll be square rooting square root in a negative number which you can't do. So, what does this real roots mean? That's a very distinctive word that does not say how many real roots it has. All it says is that there are real roots and the, the selection you have for real roots is when it's equal zero or when it's greater than or equal to zero, uh, greater than zero. So therefore, when b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to zero, you're just saying it has real roots but you don't know if it's got equal real roots or whether it's got two distinct real roots. So that is the discriminant you should be using uh, when it just says has real roots. So let's see this then. We know we've got b squared minus 4ac. The important thing is to identify what's a. Well, a here is 1 because any quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c, you're identifying the thing next, the coefficient of x squared, so the number next to x squared. What's the number next to x, i.e. b? Well, b is minus k. That's next to x, isn't it? And c is the thing that has no x's attached to it. So c must be k plus 3. And remember, it all equals 0, because that's the state it needs to be in order to assess how many roots this thing has. So you're always going to move everything over to the left, so it equals 0 when you're assessing how many roots it has. So now I can go straight for b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to 0 because that means real roots. b squared is minus k squared minus 4 lots of 1. k plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So that's k squared minus 4 lots of k minus 12 is greater than 0, just multiplying that out. And now I've got a quadratic problem again but with k's instead of x's. So I'll pretend that it equals 0. I'll solve it. So what's that again? Minus 6 and k plus 2. So critical values are k equals 6 and k equals minus 2. They're called critical values because that's where either side of them you're getting this change in sign between a positive and a negative. So they are critical um, 
they're critical values to have. They're like the turning points. Uh, <laughs> not a turning point on a curve, I mean kind of the, you're on the knife edge of being positive or negative. So quick sketch of the quadratic, you must have a sketch, you must. You must have some kind of evidence testing. So k is 6, k is minus 2, do we know where it crosses? Yeah, minus 12, it's a positive quadratic, there we go. And for it to have, be greater than or equal to 0, well that's this side this time this side this time right so six and minus two are included as well so i'm saying when k is greater than or equal to six or when k is less than or equal to minus two can i put them together no because if i go okay minus two is less than or equal to k which is less than or equal to six minus two is less than six but we're saying k needs to be greater than 6. So I can't put these things together. It just doesn't make sense. If I put minus 2 greater than equal to k minus, right? So now you're saying minus 2 is bigger than 6. It doesn't work. You can't put them together. So you just keep them separate. And we're done. Yay.